Jay here for Stratford Palette. This is the Palette Podcast, and joining me today are some absolute titans of the Manchester. You know what? Not even the Manchester United fan base, the football fan base. Yeah, we're bigger than just Manchester United. We've got Mr. Dave Pritt. Hello. Yeah, you're still bothering me, United now. You just uh, I went to the Liverpool game. Didn't oh, did you? Yeah, oh, it was yeah. a big game. Yeah. I was going to bother turning yeah. up now. Yeah, you've gone from three games a week to one every month because well, you're busy with that Stratford Paddock not, FC. Not even that. Hey, which I don't want to get into after I've just witnessed a, a well, shirt signing. A shirt signing. I mean, it go in the office, but we'll get into that later. Also, my good friend Ronaldo Brown, how are we doing? I'm doing um, great, how are you? Yeah, I'm relying on you You've this, got to this speak month. then. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm doing great. You know when you, you're, you're, you're not spoke for a while right. and then... My lips just had a dry. Yeah, yeah. I went like that and it felt like they were stuck together. Me and you've been rapping for like last 10 minutes. You've been fine. And then when the cameras were rolling, you looked a little bit like you were, are you okay? Stage fright. Yeah, not stage fright. You passed all that. Um, get used to seeing me and Ronaldo on videos as well, because Joe's away. <laughs> so, I was, no, was going to say, no, you know what? <laughs> Joe Smith's Joe, away. I was actually going to say. Get used to see Joe McGrath, because he's going to be joining us as well. Like Don't know this standing is. cover. Yeah, should we have a single on Joe? Joe McGrath, uh, okay. in for Joe Smith for a couple of times during this. During his tenure, he's just getting away, and he, what's what's cracking? I was you know going to say. Did, uh, Do you know when, like, you know, when you sometimes you're having a chat, like once my missus said to me, she said something to me, the next thing I know, we've got a cat. <laughs> and she went, I told you about this, you agreed. Do you remember? Like, yeah, do you remember yeah, that? And yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, right, yeah. okay, well, she's got a Fellaini tattoo. I remember, I told you to do that. You agreed. I'm like, what? I don't remember this. I, you know what it is? I think it's the, is it the one where they see, she goes, do you know what, um, Jay? I'm, I might get a cat. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, and, like that. and then you just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Next thing you know, you got a cat, and they're like, I've told you. And I think that's what Joe did. Joe I went, Joe do you know went, what? I'm probably gonna go away for five weeks. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, yeah, bro, you should do that. And next thing you know, I'm getting a postcard. I'm like, whoa, where the, fuck, <laughs> where the, where the hell is it? <laughs> <laughs> where was this? Well, don't worry. Do you know what? He's a dedicated guy. He's still gonna be making appearances on the channel. I've spoken to him, so don't worry if you're gonna miss it. But in the meantime, we've got the other. Do news out there, yeah? Yeah, me. He's like me. He doesn't mess. He doesn't mess about. He said, I'm gonna do some news. He's over there. I was like, look, listen, if you want to, feel free. So you're going to be getting some new time. Thailand, isn't he? Thailand. Yeah, he's loving it. He's loving it. Yeah, yeah, loving it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? What? So, um, what? <laughs> Which, why are you saying it like that? What do you mean? Like that? He's over there with his missus. It's he's not even like that. He's starting going like that. Let's not start throwing people, yeah, people yeah, yeah. under the bus when they're not here to defend themselves. He literally themselves. said he's in, he's in Thailand, he's loving it, and then he's stares straight it. at me in a way. He's way. loving it, he's loving <laughs> it. He's, he's loving it. He's going there for the food, the, the weather, and the culture. And the people. Yeah. And the people, yeah, the people. yeah that's they it. They make it. Do you know what I mean? That's all you need to know. Got to go for the people. Um, as you may have gathered, by the way, get involved in the chat and the comments and hit that like button as well, please, people. And if you're not doing already, can we move the needle a bit? Can we get to 740,000 subs? I want to get to 750,000 by the end of the season, yeah. but we can get to 740,000 oh, by the end of the video. Yeah, we, get, we can get to 140,000 by the end of this video. 740, on, we can do, we can do that, all right, yeah, 740,000. Yeah. smash it. Yeah, let's do that then. How many is that? How many I do we need? Subscribe. 226, I think we need, if my maths is right. So yeah, what do you mean you might I'm subscribe? Joke, joke, that was a joke. <laughs> do you know what? I'm gonna unsubscribe from Sloppy. Don't do that. That's right. tight. I would never do that. To you. I mean, oh, seriously, that, that'd be beyond the pale. And um, we're gonna talk about Kobe Mainu because no one spoke about him for a while. Um, this is why we've. <laughs> <laughs> this is just Kobe Mainu TV. I mean, I ain't gonna lie to you. I think every video we've done for the past three days has just been about Kobe Mainu. Because we should still be talking about Liverpool games. To be honest. I know, They've been getting man. so annoyed by that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I fucking I'm, love it. I'm grateful. I'm, I'm proud, sorry, of Ronnie, <laughs> Ronnie doing God's work. He keeps bringing it up on social media. Yeah. We keep doing it on the fan channel as well. Keep reminding people. You know what I love as well? It was the last club game, wasn't it? Yeah, of course. That's yeah, why. This is a nice time to enjoy yeah. it, aren't we? So when you go, well, it's the last game United played was against Liverpool. We're beating 4-3 and not to mind the FA Cup and stops all that talk of a quad. That's yeah, the last game we have. And we've got them coming up soon, so we have to, we have to milk it. I love the way as well, they're trying to make it out like, the league game is, is the only one that matters. Like they weren't bothered. No, they oh, weren't I've, I, that is like, really weird. I have like, seen that. They've, yeah. they've made it seem like the FA Cup quarter final didn't matter. Wasn't yeah. an important yeah. game. Like, that, like, we're, 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 like, like they weren't trying or something. They didn't. They don't care. And I was like, hang on a minute. You was banging on all about this quad leading up to it. How, imp- how are you going to smash us? How are you going to do us and all this other stuff? And how are you going to win the FA yeah. Cup? Yeah. No, but, or at least do the treble. It, it, was, no, but, what it was, was the all the Klopp's last game could be at Wembley lifting the FA Cup. And, yeah, well, and, well, they're, they're they're like, and then it's like, yeah. oh, we don't give a shit. We don't anymore. care anyway. Well, why have you just spent the last six months telling us you did? So, because nah, their logic is obviously the, the 7-0 victory that they had that in a league that led to them winning absolutely fuck all and not doing anything and finishing outside the top four meant more than being knocked out of the FA Cup quarter that, final. You're right, because- That's right. how they've actually- That, that like, 7-0, whilst it was minging from a fan point of view, and obviously- Three points. Oh, three, three points. It's three points, right? We still finished third. 
didn't stop us finishing they third. finished outside the top they four. still finished outside the top four didn't help them get champions league football so it didn't do anything whereas obviously getting outside the fa cup has literally stopped them winning the fa cup or doing the quad in clubs last season so for me yeah they can say what they want but come on man yeah it's a, it's a good one isn't it because like like you say if Klopp finishes by just having a carabao cup you know the great managers in the world they finish high top of the premier league look at the way sir alex bowed out and uh, and you know hands around the gorgeous Premier League trophy. If, if it's just if it's <laughs> just if it's just the Carabao Cup for Klopp, then yeah, because because I mean, energy, energy drink cup. When we called it when we to be fair, to be fair, he, to be fair, he did say in his interview when he's going that he's he's run out of energy. So. Oh, nice. See, there need, you go. Yeah. You see, so he's won that trophy. That. Um, people in the chat in the comments, Phobos Taco Man says hashtag butter him up. If you don't know what that is about, that is about one of the greatest puns in the history of Stratford Paddock. Um, Santa Notch says hashtag awesome hen. Um, what's that? What does that mean? Oh awesome yeah, that hen. was his other one. That was the other. This is a pun, um, puns that Ethan did. Oh. He did. What was it? Awesome. What was the reference? Awesome. Awesome. So he did the pun awesome hen with a picture ah, of a hen as well. Yeah. Just to sort it's of. It's clever, Ethan. I don't like it. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like that. I can one. say the clever side, but yeah, I don't like it's it. It's clever. But he's, he's calling. On, he's calling on the Cobby one. Was Cobby Mainu might be signing a new deal or something on it? Yeah. And it was calling on the Cobby, butter him up. That was the pun. <laughs> that's, that's bad. That was, also, I, I prefer that one. Though. He did it that the was better. one where he used the wrong picture of the young on purpose. <laughs> and then we called him over to troll him and then he changed it. So it was, like, it was obviously a thing. So he made me and Joe look stupid. <laughs> which I'm not happy about. So could it, uh, could it be money manoeuvre? Money manoeuvre. There you go. There's one for the file. <laughs> right. uh, Kyle, Kyle Chester says, we are possibly our strongest academy in years and the youth reviews have dried up. Come on, Mr. Pritt, up your game. Yeah, Mr. Pritt, why isn't all youth review? I don't watch the youth games. Come on. It's because he got a knock on the door. No, <laughs> wow. Wow. Honestly, it's been... What is it? to the podcast. And Ronnie just accuses Dave Pritt of the worst thing imaginable. Oh, my God. I'm no, I can't believe what I'm hearing. He got a knock on the door. I'm on a live, you know, on a live as well. We can't I'm staying out this one. Listen, he didn't get a knock on the door, right? Let's just get this one. It was more of a... Bang! <laughs> <laughs> so, stop it we leave see, him alone we're seizing your electronic sorry. devices yeah sorry <laughs> anyway like, can we just clarify Dave did not get the this knock on the door this is to <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah 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 the reason uh, we don't do the, the academy review anymore why Dave actually explain yourself come on um, too busy <laughs> with Paddock FC Jesus wept hey. how much time does it take every week that Paddock FC a lot yeah probably I do but every day every day mm. Really? <laughs> hey, I every pitch. Day, I yeah. that, it? Every day. Yeah. He gets good, well rewarded for it though. Yeah. Steve's always dead grateful when he screams at him. Dave. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, Dave's the glue in it. That's why I call him Dave Pritt stick. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. You made me laugh on the job. weekend as well when he, uh, the guy went on the pitch and you just told him, everyone was silent. You just like, get off the fucking pitch. And that's the first time you ever hear him pipe up because obviously he's, he's working alongside Steve and Steve's yeah. very. Uh, yeah, it's like. Yeah, it's like yeah, I mean. Taylor, Brian Clough in it. You're like the, the calm, sort of plastic guy. Steve's more animated. I was just got annoyed with him going on the pitch. He was a sub. He'd been subbed yeah. off, limped off. He kept then, doing it as well. Then, he, then our 18 year old goalkeeper got what he needed to the end. Yeah, yeah. And he comes on the pitch for big bollocks. Oh, it's, all it's, it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's an adventure, isn't it, watching Panic yeah, FC? There's always, there's always got something going on. He used to be the um, compare. Yeah, yeah, I, I, did, the the first, I did the first game. I introduced no, no, the team for the very first game. No, I, I, no, I, I thought Duckingfield was no, the first game. The first home game at um, well, that's not, arms. Which is the which was the first game? Oh, excuse me. I did the first ever game. He can no, back off. I did. He did the first ever game. What? <laughs> Duckingfield. No, Duckingfield went, oh, was the first ever game, mate. Yeah, I did it in Duckingfield. No, no. You did it at Drawsdale with Casey Evans. You did it in Drawsdale. You did the first. Yeah, well, your one goal game was shit. I heard. I heard my game. Like that is the inaugural game. Yeah, I'm part of the history. Straight of Stratford Paddock. So did I do the second game? I can't no, believe. you did the I would second. have done it. You did the second yeah. league game, I can't first believe ever home game. We're arguing about this nonsense. About who did the first game for Paddock FC. Do you know what? You can have it. I don't care. <laughs> right, let's talk about Cobby May. Yeah, let's go. Because <laughs> this podcast's been massively derailed already with lots of nonsense. Um, Cobby May knew. What's your nonsense then? <laughs> Oh Jesus Christ, man! It's over. Cut Can it. we get off this Ethan, subject? Sorry, Ethan, sorry, sorry. Ethan, cut it. Yeah. Is cut it, it possible? <laughs> yeah. To end this cut, podcast cut eight minutes in. 
because we've got free, ad, free accusations that we don't need. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. Can we just Made stop it? Made good, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it's bad great. enough that everyone thinks he's racist. Oh, yeah. oh, no, I'm not even Made he's great. No, 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 He's not. Right. He's not racist. Made he's great. Dave, I don't know why you come on this part. Dave, you watched a lot of Cobby Mainu back when you used to bother with the Academy. Um, <laughs> 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 right, this is Dave, right? Oh, Dave, Dave, talk about coming baby. That's all I'm gonna say. How good is he? <laughs> yes, <laughs> don't do that. How good is he? <laughs> we need that. <laughs> You've been watching him since he was like coming through the academy and all that stuff. Since yeah. he was down here. No, shut up. <laughs> I'm making it see that. Like, me, me and Dave. <laughs> now Ronnie's gone. This is chaos. <laughs> Bring back Joel Smith, man. Jesus Christ, I can't quote. <laughs> right. <laughs> you I can't say anything about it sounding wrong. Oh, no. oh, it's a... Me and you did a podcast oh. about Kobe Mainu uh, about a year ago, oh, yeah. about eight months ago. You compared him to a few other players and people were gunning for you saying you're getting carried away and all the rest of it. Mm. But who did you compare him to and why and do you feel justified? Um, oh, there you go. I, I think in the end I was pressurised into comparing to someone. What do you mean you were pressurised? Oh, oh, Considering it's only me and you on that video. So you're just yeah. saying yeah. I pressured you into saying things Gave him his, say. gave no, him no, his no, big break. I was pressurised. Have you switched, flipped this around? So I'm the one putting the pressure on people. Right. But I, d I didn't want to really compare him to anyone, but I said if I had to, it'd be a less aggressive Roy Keane. Right, okay. And a lot of people give me a lot of shit for it, but yeah. now people are actually saying it. To be fair, he was ahead of the curve. I will say that, Dave, with uh, Manu, because I remember when Garnacho was getting all the accolades, yeah. when he was seen as a bit of the superstar in the youth cup run, he constantly did say, I know it was no slander towards Garnacho, but no, no. Dave Dick was constantly saying to me, the Kobe Manu kid, he's better. Yeah. You basically yeah, said he was I, the best. I thought you know Garnacho was great. Obviously he was scoring all the goals, but um, Manu was the best player on the pitch by far. And was he's a little bit younger than his peers, wasn't he? Was yeah, he like, I think he was he, 16 when he was I think he was 60, 16 during the Youth Cup run, but I think he turned got to 17. 17 he was, because yeah. when I was looking at it, I think he turned 17 in the April and the game was in the May or whatever, or the June. Something like that, yeah. yeah so he, he just turned 17 where a lot of them, Garnacho and I think McNeil, maybe Hugel and them lot. Yeah, I think Garnacho was, I think he was 17, maybe he turned 18. Ah, right, so I okay. think it's a year difference. Yeah. Right, but Kobe Mainu has always been sort of a little bit ahead of it. I mean, in terms of yeah. his age, he was in the, the academy yeah. team very young. The trouble you've got, right, when you've got a player like Mainu, I think in the academy, is sometimes when you don't watch the academy week in, week out, like you do, obviously, you did certainly at that time. And you, from the outside looking in, I was hearing like loads of good things about Zidane. I was hearing loads of good things about Charlie Savage. Then you watch him in pre season, and you think, well, these guys are mint. Like, surely they deserve a chance. And then when the squads were getting announced, they weren't in the squads, and Mainu was, and everyone's a bit like, mm -hmm. oh, what's going on here? Like, how come, like, we saw Zidane and, and Charlie Savage in pre-season mm -hmm. playing against Liverpool, playing against Crystal Palace, I think, and Villa, good teams, like, obviously it's friendlies, but still. And yet, Mainu's in, and then once you see him, like, that pre-season game against Arsenal, I mean, you, you realise that, actually, I, I think it, I think the thing was with him, like all the others, like, um, they, would, they were good players, but they would still, they looked young players, where he always looked like he was, could have been a 25 year old playing in that youth, youth team because he was just so composed with everything he did. I just think that's what made the massive difference. And I think for me, that's what made him stand out. Yeah, yeah. What have you made of him, Ronnie? Because obviously, he's not just come into the team. It now feels like we're almost reliant on him. Like when he's not around, it's like, oh my God, Maine is not there. I think that's partly what's even the most impressive part. It's, um, it's the fact that usually when you've got an academy prospect or someone that's around the ages of 17, 18 coming into first team football, especially at Premier League um, calibre of football, you, you kind of want the, the environment to be quite stable yeah. and the team to be performing in a way where they can be eased in and mm. almost grow into it and be helped. Whereas Maynou's basically been thrown into like a fire pit that of a team that was underperforming, desperately needed a profile of his, of his ilk, um, has struggling with ball progression, was basically trying to spend 50, 60 million every every season, the past couple of seasons on a midfielder, missed out on De Jong. And he's coming and he's not even just been a bit part player and he's and a bit of a fresh, like a breath of fresh air. He's almost become undroppable yeah. in a way as an 18 year old. And he's provided and added an element that was desperately missing in the middle of the park. And I think it's the fact that he's just looked so unfazed by it all. He look, he's looked composed, he's looked comfortable. He's never looked overawed, and the consistency you show for someone that young 
is also very impressive. And I think, honestly, the sky's the limit. And sometimes you don't want to get too ahead of yourself and too hyped. But the fact is, we've got a huge sample size now. And if anything, his character and his personality that he's shown probably bodes well for his progression and that he'll constantly get better. Yeah. These little things like for me as well, Joe, like Ronnie was saying there, like, you know, his character. You see him, you know, when we've had young players come into the team before, like, uh, Marcus Rashford came in at 18, scoring loads of goals. Mason mm. Greenwood, similar thing. Um, even Ganacho to a less degree. You see him and they look like mint on the pitch, whatever, but off the pitch, they're a bit quiet or they do an interview, you can see they're still yeah, young. Yeah. With him, I've seen him being interviewed on Sky and he's just like, even the way he carries himself and talks, it's like he's just a seasoned pro. Yeah, this level of maturity, like he was he was always ready to step up. I think what was interesting, because we've talked about Ganacho and Meno together, is that Ganacho sort of had to be sort of eased into the squad a little bit. Like I remember uh, the st- not at the start of the season, the end of last season, if you started Garnacho, he could look, look a bit lost in games. He was really good coming off the bench and then just using his raw talent there to sort of scare defenders in that final third of the game. And it's took him a while, Garnacho, to be able to get on the team sheet and look really comfortable from minute one. And I think he's there now. Whereas Maynou, you literally threw him on and he was fucking, he was ready. Yeah. Yeah. Straight away. There was no embedding in. He was like, I can take this game. I'll read it straight away. I'll understand my role and I'll go with it. To the point where we're, we've, signed obviously in the past and we, they're still in there now world class uh, midfielders and you look at uh, uh, obviously Casemiro and you, you look at Mason Mount coming back in and he stands really uh, as your first name on that team sheet and that's some doing that in the space of you know uh, only a season I Is think when you write the midfield he's there straight away it's not even a season though kind of annoyed me what Southgate said before he put him into the squad where he said he's only played a handful of games I think at the time he played over 20 games for United and that's even with after the pre-season and being out with injured for was it three yeah, months yeah 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 so, I remember yeah. being in New York do you remember watching the game in uh, uh, when we were what was that kind of New Jersey way do you remember it and he, yeah I was played against Arsenal against Arsenal yeah because I was <clears throat> I was sat what 10 seats to the left and you and McCullough were there having the time of your lives yeah, together yeah we loved it frozen Dismissed margaritas me. yeah yeah but he was the one who stood out there and then obviously there's the unfortunate injury uh, but as soon as he gets back into the team, he's just... It, a, it didn't even take him that long to get going again. Uh, that's what I, I thought was brilliant. He was he's usually pretty, like a young player who's injured. It takes like five games or so, get yeah. 10 minutes hurt. But he was just straight back in. Well, no what issues. does he get better at then? What for you is... is well, uh, right, I'm to defer to you. You're the expert on this kind of thing. I'm not, I'm, well, no, well, no, I'm not an expert. Kind of, you know what? Better than I think anyone around his table. I, 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 think he, I think he is very well-rounded. I think what, what he can improve on is just like a little bit of increased defensive awareness maybe. I think some people have maybe pointed at that. Um, he's not exactly the quickest, but I think he's quick enough. So maybe his recovery pace, I don't know if he can get that into his game or whether sometimes speed is something hard to kind of get quicker What by the time that you're his age. I think yeah. you, you kind of are what you are. You can probably add a little bit of a percentage, but other than that, I, I reckon he can, I can see him adding assists and goals to his game. Cause yeah. I, I personally believe even though he's shown the potential and the ability to be like a first phase player playing in, in the six because his ability on the ball and his composure, I think he's got too much quality as he showed as he showed against Liverpool and even when he did that turn against Brazil, I think he could be well utilised further forward. Mm-hmm. I think as a bo- as a box to box eight, someone that can get a goal and assist as you've seen that he's capable of, but also able to do the other side of the game rather than just being a six. Well, I'd like to see him. There's, there, there's one thing I don't I can't remember who it was against where he played a amazing through ball like quite far to Ganacho, and I think Ganacho messed it up at the end can't remember if it was again I think that might have been Liverpool it could have been oh. and yeah. I think if that if that went in I think he would have tried that more often but because nothing came of it I don't think he had but he's you know he's, the range of passing he can do like that and just split the defence in half if he does that more often I think he he's going to be world class this is what Gareth Southgate mm. said after the game by the way and I will get to that in a minute Eve. Leave it with me. Um, you saw a couple of turns and a couple of really composed moments. That is a big, that is a bit, sorry, of an indication of what he might become. I mean, the, there's a, the thing there as well is sometimes it's, it's, when you're watching it, it's easy to forget he's only played a couple of dozen games at, 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 for United because he's so good, because he's so composed, because think, he's so mature, the, the, because he's so confident. That's what a lot of rival fans are criticising because, oh, he's only played a couple of dozen games. That's he's already got a stupid. Do you know what I mean? But. It's the fact that he actually came onto the pitch and showed glimpses and flashes of why he actually fully belongs there. Yeah, Do you he, know looks, what I mean? he looked so, the business. And also, and also, who, the people that were playing in front of him, the likes of Gallagher, etc. Oh did, did you watch the England game? If, it, if, it, if they it. can play and start for England, why are people more worried about Manu coming on and doing more in five minutes than him? 
Yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I thought, I'm not I like, think he was a friendly buddy, was it? Was a like, I watch. thought Gall- Gallagher, Chilwell, even I thought Gordon was okay. Playing the game, it's basically, it was basically a Bra- Brazil slash B slash C yeah, team as well. Yeah, you know it was, I mean? like, there was some first teams, not not the full strong team. And also, yeah, like, obviously, um, you know, you had the likes of Vinicius Jr., but like Casemiro plays yeah, every game yeah. from Brazil, he weren't there. Um, Neymar. I'm forgetting him. There, there's quite a few. I, remember, yeah. I saw the list. It was quite. I can't think of yeah, there, but there nah, were quite a lot. There's quite a few players. there. But he did when yeah. he came on. He just looked assured. I thought Gallagher didn't really have a very good game. Yeah, well, the way he came on, do you think he'll get a start off against South Belgium? Yeah. I don't know. You know, because I still f- I feel like Southgate a little bit. Part of me feels like Southgate almost felt like he had to like give him some minutes because yeah. the, like because of the, 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 the everyone speaking about it, everyone raving about him everyone and he's probably seen him in, the, in training the, the, or something see how good he is and then thinking i can't just ignore him the, give him 15 minutes it felt like it was almost like the bare minimum he had to do just I, give him 15 or, minutes and also to get his to get his allegiance to england like boxed off do you know yeah. what I mean? yeah. there's a lot there's a lot of, there's a lot of that with debuts need, as well do you know what i mean all, well you need five altogether do you, you switch but I think if he's playing for oh, England, can he? Well, yeah, oh, I'm not. Zaha did it, didn't he? I'm not sure about the Southgate love affair anyway, because there's a lot of people that have jumped to his defence when, with the England team that he's had, a lot, a lot of the games he's won, even in his win percentages and stuff, against, against teams that he should be winning. Against, yeah, even the, even like, the cup you know runs. I mean? oh, they're all, if you look at the cup runs that yeah. England yeah, have had, it's, 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 against, it's against weaker opposition. And I, I think I see the stats somewhere that he's played, he's had 25 matches yeah. against. Um, Teams in the top ten, yeah, in the FIFA he's rankings, lost a lot. and he's only won four of them. It's crazy. I mean, look in at the way we went out of the World Cup against France. It's like oh, Southgate that was a tricky sides. Well, that was the first time we had any anyone half decent. Know, he's the, out. Southgate's England against good sides, as in top ten national sides. The record is abysmal, but because England are quite often playing against subpar teams, and that's whether it's in friendlies or in cup competitions and cup runs, do, do you inflating his stats. Do, do you rate Southgate as an England manager? No. No, right, that's fair enough for you. No, you watch. Is it Steve, Steve Cooper? Cooper? I still do. Listen, shut up, mate. Hey, that was mate. a great <laughs> clip. That as well. Do you remember when Steve there was a time, right? Steve there was a time. I still, I still there was a time like for about three or four months. It looked like actually not that crazy because Steve Cooper started doing bits at Forest yeah, a bit more. It's not, it's not his and fault. Then like, he's, he's got he's, terrible he's mind. If he keeps finding well. players that he don't want, he's managed Ronaldo. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you know how good he is. Exactly. You rate him though, don't you? <laughs> nah, he's good gaffer. Yeah. Um, what about you? Do you rate Gareth Southgate? I don't really. I mean, some people praise his man management skills in a way. Yeah. And I think that he can obviously get a team ready for a, a, a sort of a big occasion. But then when it really comes up against good opposition, it crumbles. Do you know what? Do we, he's got, he's got an, he has to win the Euros this summer because he's got the best squad. As I, a, I, as a, do you I, think? Yeah. I, nah. Unbelievable. You know what? There's, there's France I, I, though, I, isn't I, I, there? Striker I'll, in Europe. I'll push back on that. You know why I push back on this? I think there's two reasons why England fail, like especially in this instance. Southgate isn't the greatest manager either, but I also think that it could be controversial, but I think a lot of people, and I think most people, actually overrate a lot of the England players. Okay. I I think- You've been told. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, on, <laughs> honest mean? to God. Harry Kane's currently nah, sitting top. Nah, nah, like, let, let, him, let him finish let me, and then you can come back in. Let me I feel land. like I'm, uh, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. let me land. What's the name, what's the name on um, Fiona Bruce? Yeah, well, let me land. I think, <laughs> it's question time. England do have, a few world class players, right? Yeah. But so do every single top side within obviously the, the, the FIFA rankings. Yeah. And I think a lot of the players that are below that are a little bit overrated because you see them week in, week out. And the thing is, because I will watch England against, um, play against friendlies against other teams. And I'll look at three, four or five of them, the players on the opposition team, and they look technically better, tactically better than the players in England squad. And then I feel like I don't see the gap in games when I'm watching England field their first 11 against a lot of the other teams that we might believe there is. So I just kind of think there's a bit of Southgate's probably underachieved slightly with the the team and the talent. But I also think fans, especially Premier League fans, have overrated some of the England players as well. Both both those things can be true though. Mm. Like they're not mutually exclusive. You can think Southgate's underachieved, but also that some of the players he's got are slightly overrated or the team in general is slightly overrated. I think it's easy because you watch them week in, week out and they play in the Premier League that you don't see in other leagues and other teams work what that kind of accumulate over national sides. You think that certain players are probably a little bit better than they are when when they're actually 
compared or playing alongside the, the, the world greats, which is national football, which is the best players for each nation. Um, Rory Jennings, who obviously does yeah. the club in Macca, I absolutely love Rory. He tweeted after the game, this is more like a sort of a reasoned sort of is analysis wild, of Southgate okay. and, and his, his yeah. tenure. Oh, he hates him. He put, <laughs> this, is, this is basically at full time. The man is a wimp in the job because he will dance to any tune the FA demand and say verbatim what the sponsors want to hear. It's not about football with him. If it was, he'd be lucky to manage Borden Wood. A gutless man <laughs> and a useless Boreham manager shouted out should be it. sacked tonight. And there's more. There's another tweet. Tonight? Yeah, tonight. Tonight. <laughs> Sack it, I love that. It's a disgrace that Southgate is in charge of this team. The man is a loser and a coward and it's a pitiful indictment oh. on RFA that they are prepared to sacrifice this amazing collection of players to make sure that they have a spineless company man in charge. Wow. So Rory's not holding, holding back there, but to be fair, he's been I, consistent, well, bro. Can I, can I, can I, one last follow on point is, yeah, basically yeah, my, top, my, my point is, if you put England's first 11 alongside the rest of the top eight nations, yeah. and you did a combined 11 with each side, there won't be that many, there won't be as many English players that make the combined Surely 11. Think, no, do, I, I swear they wouldn't. How many do you think? Because like say say you, do, say you do like a Foden, say you do like Bellingham, a Stones uh, Walker. You just Does, naming players that you think are good, but when no, you compare I, them yeah. to like France, if you put if you put right. France's eleven next to England's eleven, if you put Portugal's eleven next to um, England's eleven, etc. I'd, I'd say for I don't you, think you'd have I'd as say, many I'd England players in there. there. Like I think Kane, you could have, but then would you if you're having would you have Foden on the left or Mbappe? Would you have it's stuff like exactly yeah, my, my I mean? point? Like, or would you be like so you would play up top then? Do you know what I mean? No, like you might have a strike in Europe. You probably like no. Harry Kane is probably the one as yeah. an out-and-out -out striker where you go, that's a given. But then when you scratch beneath the surface, it's like okay, you know, every 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 national team, some of the best mm. national teams have got at least two or three world-class players. So I get your point. That's exactly. Like, it. I it's, think not, it's not my my, my issue with Southgate. Clear cup with it. England think if, they think if, England's if miles better. If you break it down, so. tournament into through to tournament, right? Like the 2018 World Cup, a, a relatively easy run. Yeah, Colombia really missing easy, James Rodriguez beating them on penalties. Sweden in the quarterfinal. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get against the Croatia team that are beatable, you lose. The, the the Euros, the Germany team weren't great. Other than that, it was a relatively easy run. I felt Denmark missing Eriksson. You get against Italy in the final, you lose. The World Cup just gone. Again, a relatively easy group. Like let's he's be honest, it, Iran, it, really Wales, easy. USA. Yeah, yeah, then you've got yeah, Senegal really. who had players missing. Then you get against France. And France are a good team. I'm not saying mm. they're not, but you fail. Yeah, you like fail. so, well, the the big tests, the ones that where if you failed. win that, you, you you can go. But, he's a great well, guy. That's the thing, he's had, he's had yeah, easy runs it. until he's got someone. Had. Look at the Nations League when he actually had to come across multiple decent teams. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, because because he, he, he failed massively. Because I think he got relegated. I will I will get right. I will get to some comments because everyone's got an opinion on this, and we're, we're going to talk a little bit about England, and also we're going to talk as well about this Premier League Hall of Fame. And Ronnie's been doing God's work on Twitter, just agitating everyone. I was about, as to, put, he does. I was about to put Kobe Mania in it, but I thought. Oh, I mate, do you know what? I wish you had. But first of all, yeah. right? It's not a bird. It's not a plane. It's the most revolutionary ball trimmer the world has ever seen. This is like the reinvention or the invention even of the of the wheel, the discovery of fire. This is the biggest leap forward in technology we have ever seen, certainly in below the waist grooming technology because Manscapes are here, yeah, with the Ultra 5.0. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, bro, you can't top the 4.0. The 4.0 was the pinnacle, it was the zenith, yeah, it was yeah, the top, yeah. it was the best you could get. Well. Manscaped there to dream. And don't only do they there to dream, they fulfill those dreams as well because they have come out with the performance package 5.0. You've got the Ultra 5.0, the lawnmower with the LED spotlight, the multifunctional on off button, all that mm. good stuff. Yeah, we need all that. And I know what you're thinking. I don't like change. I don't want the things that I, I used to love going, well, don't worry, they're still here. You've still got the crop preserver. You've yeah. still got the crop toner. You've still got the box of briefs, the shed travel bag to put all that in. You've got the, the weed whacker, the ear and nose hair trimmer as well. You've got all that good stuff. Plus, you've got 20% off and free shipping using the code DEVILS20. I know it sounds too good to be true, but it's not. So not only can you take part in the biggest sort of revolution you have ever seen in below the waist grooming technology, you can also have the things that you love and know and that you've come to consider part of the family, yeah? Lovely. So check out the link in the description. Use the code DEVILS20, 20% off and free shipping. Go and check out the Performance Package 5.0. Your balls will thank you. And a big thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this podcast. I want to get into some comments and then we'll go into Ronnie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rattling you, people. You're, you're, you're a lawnmower. Do you, you, do you do your front and your back garden? Yeah, I do everything, mate. Wow. It's, it's sailor made for down front there, man. Garden? Do you know what I mean? I Don't worry about that. Barely do the front. Yeah. There you go. 
fantastic. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> Nomad Joe says we really need an in-studio demonstration. No, Nomad Joe, <laughs> we really don't. Um, Ross Murphy says your balls will thank you. Yes. Um, right. Did I ask you about Southgate? Did I get your opinion? I don't think I did. No, listen, all I was saying is I don't like Southgate. I like the group of players. And I think that a, a decent manager would find a way to win a trophy using the spine of uh, of Kane, Foden and, and Bellingham. And even to the extent, look, at John Stones is a phenomenal player. I know we've not got a great keeper, but I think a decent manager with a good attacking mind can win with that group of players. He's just not it. Yeah, I'm just looking. At, I'm just looking at the, the the France game when we got knocked out of the World Cup by France. And you look at the the France team there. You've got Mbappe. You've got Griezmann. You've got Usman Dembele. You've got um, Upper Meccano, Varane, Trumaine. Uh, um, I mean, on the bench for France, you've got Camavinga. You've got Kingsley Coleman who obviously Canate. came up. You've got Canate. Like, there's some good players there. You look at the England, I'm not, I'm not disputing, I'm just saying, I'm pointing out the fact, you look at the England team, you've got Jordan Henderson, you've got Bakayo Saki, you've got Phil Foden, you've got Luke Shaw, Maguire. There's some good players there. And, but, that, and that was a France team that didn't allow Fingy to play in it. They had a couple of issues with the likes of, what, was it Benzema and Kante? Benzema, yeah, Benzema had yeah. an issue. I think Kante, oh, Pogba obviously had, Pogba, you know, he was yeah. pretty much, it was a tournament too far for him. Not in terms of his ability, but obviously all stuff that was going on. So I think sometimes it's, it's paper thin margins, but this is why you need a great coach because a great coach will get you over those paper thin margins to, to be the better team. Especially when you look at the Croatia game and the Italy yeah. game, we took the lead. The games were there. That Italy game at Wembley, bro, we went right, one you know, up. You know what's mad? I say we because I support England not as much as I support United, but I do. Like we won it up and we could have. Can I see this? Can I see this, Joe? How many um, how many England players do you reckon start for? Portugal in the strongest eleven. What in it starting at eleven? Yeah, a lot. A lot. Yeah. You reckon? Yeah. What do you reckon? Can, come on, like to be fair, I, I mean, Portugal start right. All right. Well, well I, I just I don't, I don't see anyone beating in their strongest eleven. I don't see anyone in their what of all, not of all time. No, I, I no, think, no, no, no. I think so basically my point is, I think if that. you did a combined eleven of port of current Portugal and current England, it would be very 50-50 at least. Okay. Yeah, so maybe you've got maybe in, in Portugal. 50. To be fair, you've got the likes of Bernardo Silva, you've got Bruno Fernandes, you've got Diaz, I got mean, Rafael Leal. Yeah, there's some players there. Polinho. Yeah, there's some yeah. players. Like, it's, no, I get it's, your it's point, but that's strong. why I think with a manager, you have a manager who can do that. And I think Gareth Southgate is very much like he'll beat the ones that you expect him to beat, which isn't a given because I've seen England fail to qualify for tournaments and stuff when they've had good players at their disposal. But I don't think he's the guy to get you over the the line. Um, I wonder. Anyway, he's not going anywhere. He's going to be the manager in the. I wonder in, what. Because um, I'll ask Euros. the comments. I wonder what the comments think about that. Like, when you think Portugal and England, how many England players you're start, saying it's like 50, start 50. for Portugal? Even though Portugal have won some international league, we still Recently, haven't. Yeah. France have won it. Like, yeah. yeah. France have got all of those. Like, World we, we have, there is a team there to Portugal. win some. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, I and agree. Failed. I think there's a, I think there's, well, I think I think there's a team. down on some of the. Because City, because we don't like City. Someone who plays the English squad, just uh, in the English squad, just you know, what the, you know what the problem is as and well. The Champions League. No, no, I hear that. Do you know what the problem is? So Kane I went uh, to another league. He's now top of the nah, league. Of I, I hear all that. And I was like, we just I feel like as well. I feel I like it. as well. We're still trying to get the best out of Phil Foden. Like who, I see he, Phil Foden. Who the top, City, who's the top three? He's, he's min, who are the top three players in the City's treble team? The top three players, obviously, Haaland's number one. Yeah, I think you you do look at what the defense did for City. So either Stones or Walker. Yeah, and then. De Bruyne and then and De Bruyne and then so the Foden yeah but Foden, and then yeah. and then and then Rodri and then, and, then, and, then, and then Rodri nah, as well Foden is still out so you're telling me well, that's the problem so, 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 no nah, nah, I'm not hating you said you basically said using Foden's prompt as he's just been involved in winning the treble true do you know what I mean but then again I'm saying it's arguable whether he was a top five player for the team when that won the treble but he, he's well, he's very world class for them there and he's that's still what I don't I don't think we've got the best out of Foden for England I don't. Like the, yeah, in the yeah, Euros, yeah. we met that was meant to be his tournament. It didn't really do much. No, he did do. In the World yeah. Cup, he didn't really do much. And yeah. I'm not saying he's not a good player because he is. He's meant, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But I've, I used to watch him for City, and I see him tearing teams apart. I watch him for England, and he doesn't do a lot. And I think he does have some games where he does. But I feel like it's a, a problem. Southgate's not fixed. You should be able to get more yeah, out of exactly. him for me. Exactly. Exactly. He, he's still. He is he going to play? He's playing him on the right in the other night. Yeah. He's playing him down the middle. He's playing him on the left. It's like he's still trying to work out. Sort of Bellingham. He's sort of. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's yeah. worked out because Bellingham just Bellingham in it. But it's like with Foden, he's like, what do I do with him? How do I get the best out of him? Why, you know, yeah, he's why is Phil Foden not getting so more that's of the ball? My only what did the comments say? Like, I want to see what they said that's about. My only the point is, a good manager, better than Southgate, would get something out of these players. 
Yeah, yeah really think that. Some people say don't care about England, right? I get I don't care yeah. about England, but it's, that's I true, understand yeah. that. That's yeah. that's true. Um, other people say, why are you so hard for Foden? Um, a name I can't really read out. P3QU3TON. Foden is above average, nowhere near your Bales, Neymar's, or your Hazards. Uh, I love people pluralising names as well. Right. Anyway, Let's talk, talk about England, right? The Premier League Hall of Fame is out. Just like the nominees. Because oh. Ashley Cole has been inducted into the Hall of Fame, which is a load of rubbish anyway, Actually, by Cole, the way. Yeah, I didn't speak no. of this. Yeah, he's, he's been inducted into the Hall of Fame. I'm not saying necessarily he doesn't deserve it, but I do feel like, come on. Yeah. No, 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 was him. What was no, no, why, nothing, why nothing. Looking? He's not saying anything. And if it's certainly not on this podcast. Uh, Dave has a conspiracy. Yeah, I know he's not going to share it. Right. You know, we don't encourage him. We do not have the legal team. Right. Who is our legal team, Ethan? It's Steve with, a, with Google. <laughs> Steve and McCullough. Good luck with yeah. that. <laughs> McCullough did law at uni. <laughs> <laughs> These are the conversations we've had as well. Don't, don't think I'm messing about. Oh, um, oh. Right, so Ronaldo Brown tweeted earlier on today at six minutes past two. Uh, best Premier League 11 of all time, playing a 4 3 3 formation. Doing yeah, everyone was doing this because of the Hall of Fame stuff. So, Roddy's got involved. And he said, In goal, Schmeichel. We'll have words about that later on. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, right back, that. Walker. Centre back, Van Dyke. Centre back, Ferdinand. Left back, Ashley Cole. Central midfield, uh, De Bruyne. Then he's, this is what I want. This is the only thing I want to pull you on. You've got Roy Keane or Vieira. And then you've got Scholes. Left wing, you've got Henri. Right wing, you've got Mo Salah. And striker, you've got Wayne Rooney. Now, obviously, you've also got someone I've blocked replying to you. For, I don't know who that is. Um, like, people are questioning it. <laughs> people saying, like, oh, da da. Stams should be in there. Ronnie should be in there. Obviously, we're not old. I'm, I went Christian off. Ronaldo. Obviously, people forgetting I'm not, oh. I'm not the oldest. Like, I'm going off How old for what I've seen. 25. Right, I'm so good. 25. So, the likes of Stam, even Ferdinand, I only saw, like, the only like one or two good years I don't think you could comment I mean? on Dennis so, Irwin could you nah no, no. never seen Dennis like, Irwin never seen Stan yeah which I get when someone does something put, like this right and when you've done that I don't blame you I put, for the players you picked if you don't agree with I put you're Schmeichel 20 in, years younger than me because I was going to go Schmeichel or, or Czech but then I, I thought Czech was good you know I thought um, Schmeichel I was even going to put Van der Sar because I was because Van der Sar is my yeah. most obviously visualised United keeper but then when I looked in, when I got to the, um, obviously I got a lot of criticism for the Van Dijk one because he's only won one Premier League title, but I'm just talking off eye test wise from what I've but seen. Because a, a lot of the likes of Tony Adams, Stam, obviously I've seen Vidic, Vidic was a shout, Tony Adams, what? I've never, like, from what I've seen in the modern day era of my eyes, isn't it? Outside of the fact that Van Dijk hasn't won, hasn't got obviously the, the, the winnings and the titles, I think, Obviously, him being a Liverpool player does. I, th I think but visually, I I do, I do really rate him, and I think. Do you, do you know what I think as well? I have a fear, right? I think defenders now have got it a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's because more, because of the the free kicks, VAR, and all it's that. Not even that. I like, think that's, that's I, I I think it's easier in some ways, but I think it's harder in some ways. Right, I, think okay. the I think I think centre half now to with the high lines and stuff is mm. much harder. I think yeah. they've got to do more. Like one v one defending in larger spaces. Okay. I okay. Think now I think centre half. Yeah. This is right. This what triggered. I think this is what triggered you. Say triggered because it sounds wrong. This is what made you motivated. You, I think there's this uh, Twitter account. I'm not going to name it, but it's a Liverpool account. So he's done best Premier League, or they've done best Premier League eleven of all time. Four three three, the same formation Fucking you chose. Hell. That's who I quoted. Yeah. yeah. So this That's says <laughs> goalkeeper is Alison Becker, <laughs> right back is Trent Alexander Arnold, centre back is John Stones, the other centre back is Virgil Van Dijk, left back is uh, Andrew Robertson, um, central midfield De Bruyne, Vieira, Gerrard, um, and the front three of Ronaldo, Salah, and Rooney. So they've got one, Not two, United players, three, four. Five, six Liverpool players, including five of the That's current team, crazy. which is insane for me. Like, I don't know if they're trolling or they must be trolling. Like, they, they, I, 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 got, I got stick for doing the Salah one instead of Ronaldo, but which I do here because I think Ronaldo's peak, which is his Ballon d'Or season that he had 2008, was ridiculous. Yeah, but you can't downplay what Salah's done in the last what five, six, seven years. It, can I, statistically, can I? that's what that's the only problem. And I couldn't leave Henri out, obviously. And yeah. I was never leaving Rooney out of my. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask a question, players. Jay, about um, Shearer? You can do whatever you want, son. Because well, when did he stop? 2006, six, seven. So yeah, that's, I'm, I'm like eleven. I'm like eleven, twelve years old. So you know Shearer, he's, you know, he puts his hand up in the air and runs away. Um, what would he be good <laughs> in the modern? Would he be? A, would he, what kind of striker would he be? Would he replace like a Haaland where he'd be bagging fifty goals a season? Might not be doing much, but obviously steps up, gets the goals, uh, unbelievable. Or would he find it difficult now? 
No, I the, th- how I, quick the game has gone a little bit. I think the thing with someone like Alan Shearer, right? The reason Fergie wanted him, he was he was like he was like an old school striker in many ways, but he was edging towards the more modern version of a striker that you see. So better with a ball at his feet, could get him behind and hold it up, could do like a bit of everything. Shearer was like that. If you look at him, sort of his last season at Southampton and his first two seasons at Blackburn in particular, mm. look at the goals he scored, the, the different types of goals he scored. Oh, the, wow. Like 25 yards out, getting his head on things, obviously the traditional type of strike things, the more sort of extravagant mm. type of goals. He had a little bit of everything. So I think a player like that would fit in any era. I do. I think it's like Eric. Eric I, was a player that you don't see many strikers like Eric Cantona. I you don't can put Eric Cantona in the Premier League right now. And I'm telling you now, he bang you every other week. I, yeah, I don't, I because I don't like doing the whole like, would he be good this era? Would yeah, he be good that? You know why? Because yeah. I think when you you judge players, I think you just got to judge them relative to the era that they yeah. played in. Nah, in my that. opinion, because I think it's unfair when you start doing that. Because to be a transcendent player in the '90s, you might not have to be have the same level of like physicality and abilities, Ooh. maybe some parts of the modern game. Yeah, but I think. Even that, people will argue that the games become a lot more, you can get a lot further just off physicality. Anyway, but in my opinion, I think you judge them off the relative, relative to their era because for them to be dominant in that era, you've got to give them credit for because well, God, doing the whole, you know what I mean? Some people do, or oh, in a modern game you wouldn't, but I feel like you can't do that when you you've got to give players. Shearer then the striking position in the all time because in his era, he's the best striker there is. Penalty merchant. No yeah. <laughs> you, you, I mean, you could Andy, do. Andy Cole. You could do. Andy, Andy Cole. Cole. I don't think Andy Cole should be in more conversations about. I think he's on the shortlist for the Hall of Fame, and I think he deserves to be on that. I don't know if he'll get the votes, but if you look at any metric you want to use, I think he won five titles. He scored 187 yeah, goals. Only one of them was a penalty. I know it's only Premier League. Underrated as fuck, it? Massively underrated. And I think if you're looking on the whole as well, he won the Champions League. I know it's just the Premier League, yeah. but he won the Champions League. He won a treble. He won other trophies. He won went to Blackburn and won a trophy there, which wasn't easy scoring in the final for them in the League Cup. Like, it broke that record as well when he was at Newcastle, 34 goals in a season, none of them penalties. Wow. And even like, we interviewed him and he pointed out, it's like when, when Haaland broke those records, people said he's broke Shearer's record. Like, Andy Cole didn't have exactly the same amount of goals as Alan Shearer, yeah. without penalties as well, which Shearer hadn't done. It's I, like, he I just gets forgotten. not bitter about it. No, but he's, he's, I think he, I think with with Andy Cole, he's, he's happy in himself. He's happy. He doesn't. He, remember when that guy sent for him on Twitter and he said like, "Oh, you, you, Darwin Nunes is like Andy Cole. He needs five chances to score a goal." And Cole like just replied because we spoke to him about that, and he said his son pointed it out to him, and he went, "What's this nonsense?" And then he just replied. But I think with Andy Cole, he doesn't get his credit he deserves, and I think a lot Definitely of it not. is people who haven't watched him. Maybe looking at some quotes like from Glenn Oddle, or he needs five chances to score a goal. It's obviously nonsense because he scored nearly 200 goals. So you tell him if he took all his chances, he'd score a thousand goals. That's it. that's ridiculous. It's nonsense. Plus, you see Shearer making a hit yeah. record. If, if Andy Cole took all his chances, he would have scored 200 goals in a season. Shut up. That doesn't make any sense. So he just de- never quite gets the credit. And I think a lot of the times with things like the Hall of Fame, you have a certain fan base who will rally around players. So it's like when you've got five United players to rally around, it's a bit more difficult yeah. than if you've got one Liverpool player yeah. or one Chelsea player or one Newcastle player or whatever. I know Andy Cole played for Newcastle, but he's not, you know, he's a United legend rather than just the Newcastle one. So I feel like sometimes the, the whole Hall of Fame. That argument, skewed, that, that argument's skewed. been on Twitter with the Ashley Cole one. Chelsea fans versus Arsenal fans trying to claim who is he the Hall of Famer for, really. No, because like Arsenal yeah. are saying he won two titles with us, Chelsea saying. He well, he won a lot more trophies with us in general. Yeah, but it's the Premier it's League. It's Premier League. Yeah, it's not an FA Cup. But is it just is it just on your trophies that you've won? Is it on your performances for them? It's got to be on performance, performance, ability, yeah, it's got everything, to be everything. And longevity. And, but that doesn't rule out when you have won a lot of trophies and you still should be considered I, because I, it, there's a reason why people are winning trophies because I, they're I, fucking good. I just feel that for me, Dennis Irwin's got to be in there. Yeah, but we we said this upstairs before. It's like. It used to be a discussion <coughs> people forgot about before the Premier League. And now, now, it's, now it's like people only remember half the Premier League. Yeah. The early days of Premier League, no one. Remembers. I think people like and I get it. Like someone like Ronnie's age ain't gonna remember the ninety two, ninety three season because he wasn't alive. But like from ninety three to so almost two thousand and three, almost seems to be forgotten. Yeah. And it's like the start. The Premier League starts on that Arsenal season where they drew twelve times, and so modern day. Like everyone else, like. Cannon now to a certain degree. If it wasn't for the fact he's such a hero at United, I think he might get slightly overlooked. Um, the likes of Andy Cole, a lot of his best work was best sorry, best work, like he's a director. <laughs> his best games were during the early nineties. Um Denny Serbin, Gary Pallister, players like that, mm. who you know, who, who were 
dominant during that era, winning title after title, doubles and titles and back-to-back -back titles and three in a row, whatever. Don't get the flowers that perhaps they deserve. Um, I'm going to go through some comments and then I want your Wallies of the Week. Um, so let me know. Um, Jed91 says, so Andy Cole's song, A Belter, with Ian Wright's tune. Um, Jordan Simpson says, love Andy Cole. Andy Cole, what? Oh, mate, someone's trying nonsense there. Um, Ridwan says, left Arsenal, won the Champions League, Premier League, Europa League with Chelsea. Arsenal ain't won none of them since. I thought he was actually talking about Andy Cole then. Andy Cole left Arsenal, didn't he? And just, like, he was a kid at Arsenal and then mm. went and just smashed it everywhere else. Um, Joe? Wally. Wally of the week. Uh, We've Joel, got a graphic, a I think, for that. Uh, kicking about. Um, and it's about, the obviously, the England flag. There you go. And it's about the, uh, the couple of MPs who for this uh, this week who, who've never supported England uh, in the football decided to do face paints and I can't remember the exact MP. Uh, oh, you saw. I, I, I will. I I, I, I think I re. Yeah. I, I, I'm yeah, never an MP. I, I, I retweet face this. Face paint on his face. Going uh, supporting England. He's just doing it for a political thing because the flag changed. Fuck off. He, he's the one of the week for me. What was his name? I, I think I retweeted someone who, who did make a little bit of a, the people just using that as a little gateway to get attention, wasn't it? And, um, um, I'm trying to. Oh, there it is. There he is. Right. What's he called? Matt Vickers. Matt Vickers. You're my right. Warrior so he's the MP for Stockton South, and he's the Conservatives deputy chairman. And he's put just a reminder for Nike about what the England flag looks like. Only one flag I'll be wearing for the Euros, and he's painted his face white and red. And he's also wearing a shirt that doesn't have the England flag on it. I mean, he's, he, he lines, just seems like a proper moron, flag. to be honest with you. And, you know, maybe he wants to focus on actually sorting out things like child poverty and the austerities and the country going to hell in a handbasket. Not to get political. Not to get political, <laughs> you know me. Maybe he's stood in his garden, painting his face like an absolute specimen. Um, Dave, who's your Wally of the Week? I'm just going to give it Southgate, because... <laughs> 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 Why not? <laughs> no. I love that. It's a Southgate, isn't it? Just because he got, got beat off Brazil. <laughs> got beat off Brazil. Game made him stay, but he got beat off Brazil. So it's one in a week. Is that why you get... Because he just uh, did I don't, I, don't, I don't think he should be there. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who, 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 that, fair enough. Who should he be there? He's got one in a week for existing. Yeah. Who should be there? Who should be there? Say it, say it. Go on. Cooper. Yeah. 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 The line. Get the Welshman in. Um, to be fair... I want Southgate to stay on at England if that keeps him away from the United job. Yeah. I'll yeah, give him, not, give him. no way we're getting him. Mate. It's no way. I, I hope you're right. I hope, no I hope the, the, nothing the, stupid the, goes on. Be fucking mute in here, I reckon. The wood though? Yeah. The, for a bit. The wood and then people do, even I'm guilty of it, you get behind the manager eventually. Well, people, bit, honestly, if you come in, people go, get them glazers back. Omar yeah, Barada's yeah, the one <laughs> making the decisions on that, apparently, rather than Jim Ratcliffe. Nah, right, Omar Barada ain't going to get I don't know if he'll be getting Southgate. Can you imagine getting Southgate, man, sir? Oh, no. no, hey, can you imagine them? Oh, yeah, is is who's replacing Pep? Mm. Gareth Southgate. Could happen. Man, I love that. <laughs> Seriously, that'd be you know that'd be that and the hundred and fifty charges coming somewhere. in would be the best day ever. Um, so you're saying Gareth Southgate, Ronnie? Who are you saying? Um, probably just gonna give it mm, that Steve Laws. Are you, Mister um, Reformation guy, the one that. <laughs> The one that did the tweet about um, the England players not visually looking like what he wanted oh, them to look like. Yeah, this is right. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I didn't know what you were on about here. Yeah, because this is yeah. was it Henry Winter or someone posted a picture of like um, the England players training. It's it was just crazy like crazy that. Yeah. This is this yeah. is actually insane, right? And I don't know how you can be like, how your mind works to, to even think like this. So. He did a little... Uh, Henry Winner, who's a friend of the channel, he's been on the Tier 1 podcast with me and Ronaldo Brown, good guy. He did a tweet, I can't find it, but it was basically, I'd like, Kyle Walker. Oh, here you go, yeah, found yeah. it. So, so much talent, England training, right? On the pitch, you've got... To re he's had to see under it as well. Yeah, so you've got Jude Bellingham, you've got Kyle Walker, you've got Marcus Rashford, and you've got Ivan Tony, right? Some absolute whopper, who uh, on his name said, like, basically, how many of them are English or whatever, was questioning it because, Crazy. obviously, the, the ethnic background. Um... So, Henry Winter has replied to his own tweet, says, When I look at this picture, I see, from left, a coveted finisher, world's best right-back, a mercurial attacker who fed hungry kids, and, sco and top scorer in the Liga. I see elite English talent nurtured in Northampton, Sheffield, Manchester, and Stourbridge. Sad to see racism in some replies. I mean, it's like that comedian, do you remember him? In fact, I'm going to make this a comedian one of the week, because I've not forgotten. Do you remember when we went out of the Euros? And it was that Andrew Lawrence, who's an absolute dickhead. No, and he was know. like, oh, all the, all the black players missed or whatever. He, made, he tried to make it about race. 
I was like, I just people need to it's get crazy, alive. Do you know what I mean? I don't know how you can like. Do you not? Would you not cheer then if Rashford got the winner? Yeah, wild. Like, it's it's wild. Yeah, he, he wants like England to be like thoroughbred English and. What's that mean? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that means. People's Irish history. That's, 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 that that was a joke people made because yeah. he's saying if you actually had a if he you wanted a team how he'd want the English team to be, there'd be no players because no I'm, like I'm gonna Rice. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say Joe McGrath has some yeah, heritage yeah. that isn't English. Yeah, Prince Declan Rice, yeah, Grealish, and yeah. <laughs> Declan Rice, Grealish, and, uh, and Kane. But well, they played for Ireland, didn't they? Irish. Yeah. Yeah. Like they literally played for Ireland under 17s or whatever. So it's just so so dumb. Anyway, that's enough from us. Big thank you to Manscaped sponsoring this podcast. Go and check out the Sloppy Joe's podcast. Yes, do. If you're going to check it out now as well, it's now's probably out. the best time when Joe Smith's it's away. Because, like, that's when the real... call you up, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I didn't want to hint, but, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, I was right, sat here right next to you. Um, yeah, we'll go and check out the Sloppy Joe's podcast. Make sure, as well, you're following Ronaldo Brown on the Bird... Well, it's not the Bird app anymore, is it, my brother? It's the X app. But he's always doing good stuff on there, arguing with people and giving it to scousers, which you yeah. to say. Dave... Are you still allowed on the internet? You're allowed to <laughs> 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 date release. Yeah. So if you're Christ. lucky, yeah. book in your slot with him at uh, Strange Ways. <laughs> Dave, go and check out Dave Prince. Dave, can we write? Can we say it now? Can we get the Academy Review back? People always ask me I about can't, it. Can't, can I? A certain players. He's on my man. A certain player's dad asked me about this. Plays for United, has played for United. On the way to the game, and he said to me, Yeah. Jay, when are you and Dave doing but Academy I've Review? I'll make sure we love it. Ronaldo's got his cut socks in the right way. Wow, yeah, okay, that's true. a full-time job. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll get Academy <laughs> Review back. Uh, this has been uh, the Palette Podcast. Thanks for watching.